This lesson looks into the care and maintenance of demons. Actually, the pronunciation of the word varies. I've heard people say it both ways. Some say daemon and some say demon. Mostly people don't talk about them much. I never did, but now I have to describe them out loud, so I'm just going to say demon. It's just a type of program, but the word itself, especially the odd spelling, has mythological roots. I've seen places where someone has tried to make the word into an acronym that sort of works. Some people just don't have enough to do. A demon program is one that sits in the background and doesn't do anything until something happens that it understands, then it handles the situation. An example demon is a prince spooler. The program gets cranked up, sits in the background, doing nothing until suddenly some other program starts sending stuff to the printer. The demon wakes up and starts taking this text and storing it in memory or on disk or wherever it decides to put it. Then it starts feeding it to the printer. It keeps reading in more data from its front end and feeding the printer from its back end until there's nothing else to do. Then it goes quiet again and waits until it's called to do the same thing over again. Linux has lots of demons. All Unix systems do. As you'll soon see, there is a whole crowd of them back there waiting for you to request them to do something. Now we're going to take a look at the scripts that start and stop demon processes. The daemon scripts are all here in the init-d directory. Each of these scripts starts its own daemon, or even a set of daemons. For example, the script named nfs starts more than one daemon program. One of the daemons it starts provides internet communications from this computer to a remote computer, making it possible for a file system on the remote machine to be mounted and accessed just as if it were a local disk drive. Another daemon started by this same script allows NFS daemons on remote computers to access the local file systems here just as if they were local there. To do this, this script and most of the other daemon scripts use the functions defined in a script named functions. The purpose of executing the function script is to define functions to be used in here so it's necessary to use a period in front of the execution of this command. That way it will execute the script in line just as if it had been included right here as text. This is necessary because otherwise the script would be executed in a separate shell and any definitions would be discarded as soon as it finished execution. Anyway, the same script is used to both start and stop the demons. It's done in a case statement this way. Here you can see that it uses the first argument on the command line in the case statement. This first option is start, which starts the demons running. Notice the use of the term daemon. This is the name of the function defined earlier that starts the processes running in the background. Here you can see that the script uses the kill proc function to halt the demons when the stop option is specified. But these are not the only options. There is a status option that reports whether the demons are still running. There is a restart option that stops the demons and causes them to start running again. This can be used if you install a new version of the demon programs. Now, there are a lot more details, but that's the basic idea. In the next lesson, I'll show you the trick the RC script uses to invoke just the right daemon scripts for each run level.